Good evening, Gracina. Good evening, teacher. How are you? I think we're going to start right now. Just give me a second. Okay. Good evening. Just turning on my camera right now, making sure that everything is fine. Okay, I me too. How was yesterday? I want to apologize because I couldn't join the class yesterday, but I think we're better now. Okay. Are you okay, teacher? Yes. <laughs> oh, okay. Just uh, some... Uh, I was worried. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was just making sure that everyone was... Every Everything was fine here. What happens to my mouth? There is some, oh, there we are. Sometimes Zoom has filters and I, <laughs> that's why my mouth looks funny. Now, how are you? <laughs> how was your weekend? Very long weekend, actually. <laughs> was good? Good. Okay, perfect. I can enter because I don't have a good enter in this moment. Okay, yes, let me tell them. We are waiting for you. Okay, I'm going to start with you, right? And let's go ahead and share some of the information we have in the platform. Today, we are going to learn uh, what gerunds are, right? That's something that we are going to work with, right? What gerunds are, but I want you to also, right? Make sure that we understand and that we ask questions, okay? Now, let me show you here my computer. Can you see the platform right now? Yes, teacher. Yes, teacher. Okay, very well, very well. Now, we're going to work here, right? Our objective for today is that we are going to learn about the best jobs on personal, based on personality types, right? Do you know what is a personality? What are personality types? Do you have any idea? Personality types. Do you know what those are? I have um, an idea. Okay, what is it? I understand that it means uh, what type of personality you have to develop uh, any job. Okay, okay, very good, right? We have different type of personalities, right? Um, let's see here, Gracina, do you know the personality types? No? Uh, mm, yes. Um, one type of, of personality. Um, shy or. Um, uh huh. I know. <laughs> um, Just that. Let me show you a picture of personality types, right? And then we see if you by any chance are one of those personality types, okay? Or what do you think is your personality type? Today, we're not gonna make a test of this, of course not, but let's just see here. We have some personality types, extroverts, sensors, thinkers, judgers, introverts, intuitives, feelers, and perceivers. Now. 
Hello, Adriana. Hello, Miss Guti. Juan, Rosa Luz, Hello. welcome to the class. Hello, teacher. Right. Hi there. Hello. Hi. So we're going to check on these personality types a little bit. And then we continue with the book to see what do we have, right? Uh, extrovert. Susana, can you read what extrovert says? Okay. Uh, extroverts. Extroverts are energy size by people, enjoy a variety of tasks, a quick pace, and are good at multitasking. Are good at multitasking, right? Doing a lot of things at the same time. Very well, thank you. What about sensors? Casina, can you read sensors? Okay, uh, sensors. sensors are released to people who like to focus on the facts and details. They apply common sense and past experience to find practical solutions to problems. Excellent, thank you very much. Miss Guti, thinkers. Thinkers tend to make their decision Use your logical analysis object, um, objectively, weigh pros and cons, and value honesty, consistency, and fairness. No, so fairness. Very good. Yeah, fairness. Very good. And objectively. Objectively. Thank you, Ms. Guti. Juan, chargers. Okay. Judges. Judges tend to be organized, organized and prepared, like to make and stick to plans, and are comfortable following most rules. Very good. Thank you so much. Now just repeat with me one organized. Organized. Organize. Okay, thank you. Comfortable. 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 Yes, thank you. Rosa Luz, introverts. Introverts often like working alone or in a small groups, prefer a more delivered mm -hmm. pace and like to focus on one taste at a time. Okay, very good. Right. They like to deliberate, right? They like to talk and say yes, why, right? And they like to argue. Intuitives uh, means... Adriana Pais. Intuitive. Intuitive prefer to focus on possibilities and the big picture. Easily the pattern, pa I don't know. Value, patterns, value innovation, and seek create, create, creative solution to the problem. To problems. Gracina, go with fillers. Okay, um, fillers. Fillers tend to be sensitive and cooperative and decide based on their own personal values and how others will be affected by their actions. Thank you so much. And perceivers, Azucena. Perceivers. Perceivers prefer to keep their option open like to be able to act spontaneously and like to be flexible with making plans. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. So what personality type are you? Or are you, because in reality, we are not just one type of personality, right? We're just like a mixture of many, right? So what are the, like your major uh, personality traits? Sensor. Sensor. Okay, why? Just briefly tell us why do you think that? Because um, I think uh, I make uh, different uh, things 
when I practice the sensor. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good, excellent. Somebody, somebody else wants to share what personality type do you think you are? Uh-huh, Azucena? <laughs> I was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm considering a sensor too. Sensor too? Yes. Why? <sighs> because I, I think um, I like to work with people uh -huh. and, and I like to focus on the, the facts and details. And that's why I study business manage, management, management. This, uh -huh. You mm -hmm. like the facts, you like the details, the numbers. Yeah. Uh, very good. Thank you so much, Azucena. Thank you. Somebody else wants to share before we watch the video? No? Ah, why are you so shy today? Don't be shy. <laughs> Don't be shy. Try to share. So I, 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 teacher, I, I think, I think, I think. Uh, you're a thinker. Why? Yeah. Why, Martinez? Uh, because before acting, I think a lot. What I gonna do? Me in too. always, uh, yeah. In always, I have uh, positive. Uh, result. Oh, nice. Good. That's perfect one. Excellent job. Now we're going to go back to the to the platform, right? We're just gonna go back there. Tell me if you can see the platform there right now. Yes. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Yes, we can see it. Okay. Wonderful. Right. We're going to go ahead and watch this video right uh, miss miss goody can you please read here this instruction please okay watch the video below and take note of the different personality types as well as the best job best situated for each personality after watching the video Belong write the discussion forum what personality type you are and what type of job you do. Do you? Okay, perfect. Now, you already mentioned some personality types. I show you some of them. Right now, we are going to watch the video and see if the personality types that we just mentioned are the same in the video, right? And let's see, Azucena mentioned something very important. She said, I'm a censor. That's why I studied business administration. Did you listen to that? She said that, right? So this video is similar because it's telling us what personality type you are and that's why you chose that career, right? So let's see what happens. Tell me if you can see the video. And if you can listen to it as well, give me a sec. Do you listen to that? Yes, teacher. Okay, I'm going to put myself on mute, right? And then let's watch together. Welcome to Matheson College. I'm Jamie Fitch. Some students arrive on campus with clear career ambitions, but most students need some help figuring out which field of study is right for them. The good news is, help is available. I'm here with Jacqueline Auden, a career advisor from the Career Services Department here on campus. Ms. Auden, you've advised a lot of students over the years about choosing a major and a career path. What should students consider? Well, Jamie, one of the first things to consider is your personality type. 
well, along with your skills, abilities, and personal preferences, your personality type can guide you toward finding a major that best suits you. Okay, so how many personality types are there? There are six basic personality types. Hmm. Artistic, conventional, enterprising, investigative, realistic, and social. Now, the first type is artistic. These people are creative and imaginative, and they prefer to work on one project at a time rather than multitasking. What careers should artistic types pursue? The most important thing for this type of people is being in charge of a creative project. So careers to consider are landscaping, graphic design, web design. I see. The next personality type is conventional. Tell us about that one. Yes, conventional types are practical and orderly. They respond well to rules, procedures, schedules, things like that. Hmm. What types of careers do conventional type people usually enjoy? Conventional types often enjoy numbers, and they're also good with measuring and analyzing things in general. So, often they tend to be bankers, lawyers, building inspectors, and technical writers. Are they good business people? Sure, they can be. But they usually work for others. The next type, enterprising people, those are the business owners. Ah, the enterprising type. What characteristics do those people share? They tend to be leaders. They're independent and willing to take risks. They're good at motivating people, so we often find them in sales. Really? Hmm. What careers do they enjoy, aside from sales? Well, they're good at directing projects and people. So they make good managers. Okay, so that's three types. Let's take a look at the fourth type, investigative. Well, this type of person prefers logic to imagination and tends to be precise and detailed. So Jamie, what are some careers that you think would suit this type of person? Hmm. Science would probably be appealing. You're right. Uncovering mysteries is key to any type of science. But librarians are also the investigative type. Billy, any career that involves research fits into this category. Hmm. So that brings us up to the fifth type, realistic. Yes, realistic types like to work with their hands, with tools. They want to see the results of their work in physical terms. Hmm. That sounds like repair people to me. Yes, that's right. Also jewelry makers, builders, and engineers. So now for the sixth personality type, which is the one that describes me best. Yes, I think you're right. <laughs> the last type is social. Social types like people. Their jobs usually involve helping and communicating with others. Oh, but teaching would appeal to social types. Oh, yes. Medicine, coaching, broadcast journalism, and, of course, career advising. That's us, social types. Ms. Auden? Okay, so we just watched the video, right? About the career types and about the personalities. I don't know, I guess. So, <laughs> so uh, we have the personality types that they mentioned in the, in, the, in the video and the personality types that I show you, okay? I want you to do something. I want you to look at both of them okay and tell me right now that you're looking at both of them right which for example if you had uh realistic which of the realistic uh characteristics matches this right so i want you to think of both i'm gonna send this right now to the to the chat right to the whatsapp group let me send it to you, right? And now I'm going to show you the ones in the video, okay? It's your personality. What you the good news is, help is available. I'm here with Jacqueline Auden, a career advisor from... Personal preferences, basic personality types. Hmm. Artistic, conventional, enterprising, investigative, realistic, and social. Okay, 
These are the ones that are mentioned in the video. Did you receive the ones in the chat in WhatsApp? Yes? Yes, okay. Now, based on what you said, what, what is the one that matches artistic for you? We have there uh, extroverts, sensors, thinkers, judgers, intuitive, fillers, perceivers. What do you think? I want you to, to try to, 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 to match them. It's not necessary, but let's see if they are similar, okay? Let's start. Who has an idea? Or let's do something, I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give you five minutes to think in pairs. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. yes, in pairs. Come back, right? I'm gonna give you a screenshot of this too, right? Do you understand what you're going to do, by the way? Yes. Yes, okay, very well. Now I'm gonna put you in groups. But you're gonna be there just five minutes to discuss. Five minutes only, and we come back. Okay. Now let me put it, put you here in the breakout rooms. All right. We're gonna work in groups of three. All right. And let's go. Everyone should speak. Let's go. Let's go. It says that ten minutes, but no, we're gonna be there only five. Let's go talk. Um, good evening, teacher. Good evening. I'm just listening. Okay. Don't mind. Uh, we have six personalities, you know, and we have to yeah. match with this, how many? Two, four, six, eight. Other type of personality, and mm -hmm. uh, I think that sensors. Uh, how it say is a uh, realistic. Is a match with realistic because sensors are realistic people who like to focus on the facts. Okay, but does that match on with what she actually said in the video? Ah, uh, no, in the video, no, in the video, uh, sensor are uh, details, detail. That is, uh, can I see a, what kind of personality we have, please? I send it to you in the Six. chat, both of them. Okay, let me see, okay. Okay. This is conventional. Uh, that is a uh, conventional sensor is dynamic. And I uh, serving different person of the different areas. Okay. You uh, working in the, uh, um, uh, company, company. Company. Or do you uh, is developer? Okay. No. Okay. I am work by a freelancer, a developer, and I consider it with more personality in my work is sensor because I need um uh things um uh, and remember 
other situation and in analogy and uh, my word is very, very analogy and, and when I have to work, <laughs> the first thing I have to work and but my um, uh, but my personality in my daily routines is very self, but perceivers, no perceivers um, have have open mind, have options open. I think it, it can be artistic social. also or artistic or social. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Social or Social, I think it's uh -huh, much with those. Uh -huh. And feelers. Um, and feelers are like, no science. Uh, artistic. Um, judges. Judges is like uh, people um conventional yes thinkers tend to make the decision using using logical analysis object object i don't know how to pronounce this word Pros and cons and value, honesty, consens, consistency, and fairness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it can be science, I think. Uh -huh. I'm not sure. In this, in the, in the field. I have thinkers, uh, social extrovert, huh? and Investigate, investigative and realistic is missing for me. Yeah, realistic. Um, but realistic. Uh... We are going to go now to share the ideas that we just got, okay? Okay. Um... Welcome back. Hello. Just have four people. Let's wait for the others, okay? 30 seconds. No, 10. Hi there, welcome back. So we have three teams, right? We have in group number one, we have Adriana, Juan, and Luis. Choose one person that's going to represent your group. Adriana, Juan, and Luis, choose one person to represent your ideas. Room Adriana. <laughs> room number two, okay. From room number one, we have Adriana. From room number two, we have Miss Guti and Miss Ramirez, who's going to speak. And in room number three, we have Rosina, Asu, and Sylvia. Choose one person. You will have one minute to share your ideas. Okay? I'm going to share the ones, uh, the personality types from the book. Uh, from uh, Yes, from the book. And you tell me. 
I'm all ears. Okay, I think we we think we think the uh, personality artistic is is so is person um sensor and introvert because is she she have um, more ideas is more um, um more is different energy. Okay. Um, and conventional person um, is, I think, I, we think is per, per filler. Okay. Conventional and filler. Okay. Uh -huh. I'm, go ahead. Uh -huh. Okay, and enterprising. And um, I have a question. I don't. I. Um, no, me, no me queda claro que es enterprising. Enterprising are the people who likes to uh, make business, create. Oh. Okay. Um, okay. Enterprising. Uh, uh, can. Uh, people extroverts because um, very, uh, we see very, very very of take and energize and, and good testing investigates um investigate is is people thinkers and realist sorry and um, and realistic people with our fair and sensor. Uh -huh. And social and um, people extrovert and people, um, I don't know, perseverers. Okay, perfect, Adriana. Thank you so much, group number one. Very good, very good job. Now let's go with group number two. Who's gonna talk, Veronica or Elizabeth? You have Veronica, Elizabeth, and Juan, right? Yes. Oh. Okay, who's going to speak? You have one minute, only one minute to share. Me escuchan. Yes, I I can hear you, but in I wait one minute. I have a problem with my work. I take my take a few minutes, people. Don't worry, Veronica. Can you please okay. share your ideas? Thank you, Elizabeth. The general personality. Yes. Uh, I, I don't know. It's... What did you discuss in the group? What did you talk about? That's all we want to know. We don't want to be perfect. We just want to know what did you discuss? In my case, I like the personality enterprise. Because I I would like to make business. Okay. And I like when the person or of in my case I like the artistic too. Okay. okay. Thank you so much, Veronica. We really appreciate your opinion. And the last, group, the last group, Gracina, Azucena, and 
I don't remember. Sylvia, right? <laughs> Go ahead. Who's going to talk? Yes, uh, ahead. Yeah. Okay. We, we think that artistic person is people who, who is perceivers and extroverts. Mm -hmm. Thinkers is people who is investigate sensors, conventional and introverts too. Okay. Uh, people enterprising is people who is extroverts. Extroverts, okay, very well. Social, uh, social is people who is perceiver. Uh, conventional people is people who who is thinkers. Thinkers. Judgers is conventional. Is people who is conventional in, and realistic is people who is sensor and introvert. Introvert. Okay, very good. You did a great job. Thank you so much. Yes, we can match it that way, right? The purpose of the activity is to talk, right? To speak, to listen, understand, and then to share our ideas. Very good, everyone, and applause, right? Excellent job, right? Now, we're going to move to more, I like grammar, so I would say more enjoyable part of the class for me. <laughs> we're going to work with gerunds. Do you know what gerunds are? We work with gerund phrases. What is a gerund? Does you know? Yes, Luis? What's a gerund? Any idea? Gerund is nouns that the Finnish is with e ing. With ing, okay. It's a noun. Listen to that. I like that. It's a noun that finishes with ing. Okay. Close. Thank you, Sylvia. Very close. And right. you have an idea. Very good. Who else? Nobody else? No? Okay. So in this class, or in this second part of the class, we're going to learn what germs are, okay? Now, we're gonna watch a video because we have to watch the video, right? But after that, we're gonna give examples. Now, what are germs? I want you to look at the information that I gathered for you, right? Dun, dun, dun. Can you see my computer? Yes, teacher. Okay, now. Sylvia is very close on what she said, right? Sylvia, can you do me a favor and read how the gerunds function? Okay. Just like nouns and noun phrases, gerunds and gerund phrases can be used in several different ways in sentence. In general, there are four different ways that we use gerunds as subject, subject complements, direct objects and objects of preposition. Very good. In this class, we're going to use, we're going to, we have divided gerunds as subjects and objects, right? So that's what we're going to see. What is a subject? A subject is the main character in the sentence, right? Is the one who produces, who, who performs the action, right? And what is an object? An object is what the verb takes, right? So everything after the verb is an object. Everything after the verb is an object. Everything before the verb is going to be our subject. Usually subjects we have a uh, Luis, Elizabeth, they, we, right? Our teacher, those are subjects, right? But here we are going to use phrases, right? In this case, for example, we have the verb smoke, right? You know what smoke is, right? You smoke a, a cigar, right? So you have a smoke is a verb, right? But if we put ing to that verb and we say smoking is bad for your health. Now, the word smoking is not working as a verb anymore. What is the verb in that sentence? Smoking is bad for your health. What's the verb? Smoking. 
What is the verb in that sentence? Yes, Graciela? Please. Veronica? The, 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 repeat the, the is, sentence. Smoking is bad for your health. What's the verb? The verb is bad. No, that is an adjective. I am sorry. <laughs> what, Gracina? Bad. Is is the verb. Is is the verb. Yo dije is primero. The, oh, you said it. Good. <laughs> we didn't hear you. Did you hear that? No. <laughs> now, is is the verb. Is the verb to be. Sounds simple, but it's true. Right. And smoking will be the subject. Right. Is is the verb. Right? For your health or bad for your health is the complement or the object in the sentence. Right? Now, let's go ahead and watch the video before we continue reading this and the examples I brought for you today. Right? And we start making our own examples. You're going to see it's so easy. Okay? Don't worry. I see a message here. It says, Sorry, I'm late because I went out. Uh, okay. Sorry for you. <laughs> I'm going to go out late too. So, are you ready to watch? Let me know if you can listen to this. Yes. Welcome to this class. You listen to that? Yes. Okay. I'm going to put myself on mute. Let's start. Welcome to this class. In this class, what we want to do is we want to practice gerund phrases. As we're going to learn how gerunds are used as subjects and also how they're used as objects. And uh, you might have seen and you might be a little bit confused about this whole deal here. So, for example, whenever you see, uh, like at hotels, you see no smoking, uh, no parking, all that. You might think that that is wrong, but actually it's not. And then we're going to try to make sense of all of that here. Um, and then, so let me give you an example on how this is used. So we're going to talk a little bit about politics. Uh, a little bit, uh, not going to details, of course, but just some general things about it. Uh, so running for office. Well, look at a couple of sentences here and then uh, just uh, see some common things that politicians say whenever they're running for office. Well, and the, the first thing is voting is an important responsibility. Um, improving our schools, fighting for a new hospital, etc. So let me quickly outline that this is a gerund. So a gerund is simply a verb which uh, you um, add ing to, all right? And then, uh, of course, there's some spelling things about Okay, look at this example, right? The first one, voting is an important responsibility, right? Definitely, our subject is voting, right? Voting. Now, in the next one, I will keep fighting for a new hospital. What is the subject in that sentence? I will keep fighting for a new hospital. Uh-huh, what's the subject? Come on, free fighting. I, very good, Miss I. I is the subject. What's the verb? Will keep. Will keep is the verb, right? Well, it's a verb phrase, will keep. And then fighting will be our object. Let's keep watching. Let's keep watching. About it that you might have learned in previous classes. But here are some examples on how gerunds are, are used either as subjects of sentences. So for example, voting is an important responsibility. Voting is the subject of our sentence. So it's not acting as a verb. Let's discuss improving our school. So as you can see there, we're using that as an object. And so let's try to make sense of all of this. A couple of more examples. Choosing a candidate takes time. And um, let me point out um, the gerunds here. So choosing a candidate, that's, that's the subject of our sentence. I enjoy working for the people. Okay, that's uh, working in that case is not acting as a verb. It's acting as the object of our sentence. Uh, do you resent paying higher taxes? Again, pain is not the verb. It's, is, is the gerund that is being used um, as, a, as an object there. 
So now that I gave a few examples on how gerunds are used as subjects and how they're used as objects, I would like to go into details now and talk a little bit about the usage of gerunds. And the first thing that I'm going to mention is that uh, in this case, in this lesson, we're using gerunds as nouns. So we're using them as people, places, or things. And so we're familiar with the verb work, for example. And if we include ing, then we turn that into a gerund, right? But now we're going to use this gerund as either a subject of a sentence or as the object of, a, of the sentence. And that's what we're going to learn. So let's take a look at the, another gerund. So for example, the verb they, I'm sorry, the verb pay, we turn that into a gerund by simply adding ing. And then we have paying, improve. And of course, there are some spelling things that you should have learned in previous classes. Uh, and uh, we remove that E, for example, then we add ING, and so we have improvement. Let's go into some details now, and let's talk a little bit about gerunds, and particularly gerunds being used as subject of sentences. So on the screen right now, we can see that a gerund can be the subject of a sentence, and a couple of grammar rules to learn is that it is always going to be singular. It's always going to act as a third person. And so let's look at that. Voting is an important responsibility. Choosing a candidate takes time. And as you can see, those are subjects of sentences. And uh, the idea here is that this is going to be singular. So we're always going to have a singular verb. Like in this case, voting is an important responsibility. We could say voting was or voting will be, but the idea is that it's going to be singular. And then the other example, choosing a candidate takes time. Again, choosing becomes the subject of our sentence, and so becomes a thing, not necessarily um, a verb. Um, and then, of course, we need to follow that grammatical rule that we need to add S to that verb. Okay, remember that, remember that the gerund the gerund is going to be singular all the time. That's important to remember. Let's continue. When talking about this topic, it's important not to confuse the gerunds with the present progressive. So let me give you an example about that. If I express, I'm voting today, really what I'm saying is that it's an action that is happening today, right? It, it could be in the future, by the way, as well, but I'll, I'll talk about that later. Um, and on the other hand, voting is an important responsibility. So in that particular case, I'm using that as a present progressive form. On the other hand, I'm using that as a gerund. So I'm using that as the object of my sentence. And so there, it's a verb. And the second example, it's, a, it's the subject of a sentence. And so let me just give you a quick example of what I want you to do. So what is exciting for you? Okay. Well, windsurfing is exciting. Windsurfing is very exciting. Playing soccer is exciting. Going to the movies is exciting. So all of those expressions that you've heard in the past, and they don't quite make that much sense, they should make a lot more sense now. And so what I would like for you to do is to Take that concept then and tell me what makes you laugh, what gives you a headache, what is impolite, what is popular in your country, what destroys the environment, and what uh, can be dangerous. All right, teacher, let me try the first one. For me, watching comedy movies makes me laugh. For me. I don't like those examples like robots. So let's try to make our own examples, okay? So. The first one is windsurfing is very exciting. And the next one says makes me laugh. Makes me laugh. For example, I would say uh, watching, sorry, watching Adam Sanders movies makes me laugh. Okay. Watching Adam Sandler movies makes me laugh. That's my example. What's yours, Archimedes? Number one. Let me see the. 
making making um uh, making i don't know making jokes makes me laugh makes me laugh okay laugh laugh loud okay loud no laugh But, look at my mouth laugh 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 is that uh, laugh laugh no It sounds like an F. Laugh. Okay, laugh. There you are. Excellent. Okay, laugh. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Choose another person for number two, please. Uh, Mrs. Spice. Okay. Adriana, number two. Okay, is giving, giving me a What? Is giving giving me a headache? It is giving me a headache. No, that is incorrect. Mm. You are confusing gerunds with present progressive. Right, it's totally different. I will say, for example, teacher. Uh, Eating ice cream gives me a headache. You see the difference? Eating ice cream, because it's very cold, eating ice cream gives me a headache. What would you say there, Adriana? Mm -hmm. What gives you a headache? Who wants to help Adriana? Okay. It For is. Me, mm -hmm. Read a lot. Give me a headache. Okay. Reading a lot gets me a headache. Very good. Headache. Repeat. Headache. Excellent. Thank you. Choose another person. Adriana, try to make your examples right now, okay? And put them in the chat so we can check them. Who's next? Who's next? Oh. Mm. Miss Hernandez. Okay, Miss Hernandez, Rosina, number three. Isn't polite. Uh, eating with uh, the open mouth isn't polite. Excellent. Eating with an open mouth isn't polite. Very good. Smoking in public isn't polite. Talking out loud isn't polite. Very yeah. good, Rosina. Excellent. Who's next? <laughs> um, let me see. Sylvia? Um, Sylvia. Sylvia, what is Sylvia? No, she left. Oh, no, she's there. <laughs> Um, uh, dancing in familiar parties is popular in my country. Yes, of course. La cumbia samposana. Very good. Thank you, Silvia. Very good. Who's next? Number five. Azucena. Azucena. Okay. Um... Contamination, I don't know if it is correct, the pronunciation of... Contamination. Contamination destroys the environment. That's correct, but what is, what is the, the germ? Contaminating. Contaminating. Destroys the environment. Okay, very good. Throwing garbage. Throwing garbage on the street. Destroys the environment, right? And the rivers. Mm -hmm. And the rivers, yes. That's true, the rivers. Number six, who's next, Asu? 
Um, let me see. Gra Gracinha. No, she already, she already participated. We have okay. Mayra and Elizabeth. I choose Mayra de Paz. Mayra de Paz. Go with number six. Not watching side by side when you cross the street can be dangerous. Okay, very good. Very good. No watching on both sides of the street. Very well. Thank you so much. Now we're going to watch the rest of the video, right? Because we only have like a few minutes left, like four minutes. So let's watch the end. And so what I would like for you to do is to take that concept then and tell me what makes you laugh, what gives you a headache, what isn't polite, what is popular in your... And so let me give you a few examples. Oh, let me talk about... Destroys the environment. Not taking action on weapons of mass destruction can be dangerous. Now let me talk about the last part of our class and what we want to do next is we want to learn how gerunds can also be the objects of sentences. And so let me give you a few examples about that. So we heard politicians say, I suggest improving our schools. So as you can see, the suggest is our verb and improvement becomes the object of our sense. So it's no longer a verb. I enjoy working for the people. This is what politicians say. And what we want to do here is we want to use gerunds as objects. So they both enjoy. What do they enjoy? They enjoy watching the birds. And then they, I mean, you could you could have said uh, different things. And so what I would also like for you to do is to try to make sense of all of this and try to complete this exercise. So I'll have my virtual students try this out. But I would also like for you to try this out. Now, I want you to take a, a screenshot. Well, you have this in the platform. You can do it later. Tomorrow, I will explain more on, on this. Don't worry. It's not going to be just today, right? It just means, Veronica, what do you mean that you don't understand the second sentence? Please elaborate. Which second sentence? When you complete the, the sentence. The fish. Well, in exercise one? No, no, in the... Uh, in the last... In, in, the other, in the other exercise. Okay, in exercise one. Yes. Okay, what we're doing, Miss Veronica, is that we are using gerunds as subjects, okay? So, what are gerunds? Gerunds are those verbs with ing that they don't work as verbs anymore in the sentence. For example, we have the verb eat, eat. I can say, I eat, I eat salads every day, right? I eat salads every day. Then eat is the verb, right? I eat salads every day. But if I say eating salads makes me healthy, right? Now, eating is not the verb anymore, right? It's the subject of the sentence. What's the verb there is makes, right? Eating salads makes me healthier. So what we're doing here is that we're trying to avoid using the gerund or getting confused with the, with the gerunds and the ing forms, okay? But tomorrow I will explain a little bit more, okay? Don't worry, that's the first thing that we're going to do. Try to complete this exercise, we're gonna check it tomorrow. Right. And please comment on the forum, right? Make your examples, complete the exercises so we are on the same page, okay? Okay. Guys, it's a pleasure. Have a beautiful rest of the night and see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, thank you. Bye-bye. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow, yes.